Welcome to Q&A for week five. So Q&A for week five, we're going to go over the multiple choice questions on exam two. This will be important because especially for those of you who are going on to organic chemistry two, you will have a cumulative exam. So we'll have a, a, a cumulative exam the last week of organic two, and it'll include organic one and two. So you will see this material again. Okay, so I went through and picked out six questions on the multiple choice out of 25 that were the most frequently missed. So I will include those. And then I had a student send me uh, five more questions that they wanted answered. Okay, so that means I'm going to go over 11 multiple choice questions. You should have access to those answers. Um, and then it looks like everybody's uh, Pogel for week five. So the people that are turning in week five Pogel looks good. So um, everybody's doing those properly. Uh, today is your quiz five. Um, and I sent out an announcement saying we are focusing on elimination reactions. And so you need to be looking at alkenes. And electrophilic addition is what we're going to be working on at the end of this week. Um, so let's go ahead and go over these 11 questions. And um, we'll start there. Okay, so uh, question number one. The question was, which of the following compounds will undergo an SN2 the fastest? Okay, so what is your order of reactivity for SN2? So an SN2 is, needs to be sterically underhindered. So a benzyl, so this would be a benzyl halide. That's going to be fast, just like an allylic. Okay, so this is an allylic halide. And those are going to be faster than, or just as fast as a methyl, uh, a primary, okay, and then a secondary. The secondary gets into the gray area and it starts competing with um, also SN1. And so when we look at this, this is also a test of can you do naming? So your answer here is the 3 bromo 1 propene. So what does that look like? So here's your propene, and you've got 1, 2, 3. So that's an allylic. Okay, so that's going to be your fastest. You also have bromobenzene. There's bromobenzene. This will not undergo an SN2 because it's an sp2 carbon. And we talked about that. You have one propanol. Okay, OH is not a good leaving group. So they're not going to undergo SN2 at all. And then you got one bromo propane. So you have this, and this is a primary and primaries are not going to be as fast as an allylic because of resonance. Okay, so let's go on to question number five. So now Q5, which is our second question. Um, in the free radical bromination reaction, of 3-methylhexane, the formation of which intermediate has the lowest activation energy? So which one's the more stable? Okay. So 3-methylhexane, what does that look like? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. So 3-methylhexane. And you're wanting to 
do the radical reaction, so initiation, the bromine does the radical, and then which hydrogen is going to be abstracted? And this is hexene, sorry, hexene. So, hexene. And I have, let me draw this. Okay, so here's your hydrogen. This is going to be the hydrogen that gets extracted in the proper way, proper propagation one step. So your bromine radical will go and abstract this hydrogen, and then you get HBr, and you get this molecule here. And so that would be the hydrogen that gets abstracted. Um, you would not abstract this hydrogen because it's a primary. So that one would be a primary. Um, this hydrogen here would be a, it's a sp2. So no. And same thing with this one. This hydrogen is an sp2. So, and then you have this one here. This one is an allylic. And it's a tertiary allylic hydrogen. So some of your other answers. So this is the one you were looking for. Some of the other answers that were available were this one. So we said that's a primary, so no. We said this one, that is not, that's a secondary. And then you had this one, which is a vinyl, and that's the least likely going to happen. Um, so notice how when I read these questions, I go to the actual reaction, and I start working it from there before I ever look at the answers. And I recommend you do that for these multiple choice. Okay, the next one is um, which, the next one is Q10, which is the least stable carbocation. And so what's your stability of the carbocation? Well, allylic and benzylic. Um, are the most because they follow the same uh, pattern as your free radicals. So an allylic cation looks like this. A benzylic cation looks like that. And those are most stable. And then you have a tertiary. Okay, that would be a tertiary carbocation and then a secondary. Um, primary carbocations are not stable. So then your choices Notice I put down what I know about stability of carbocation patterns before I look at my choices. Okay. And sometimes you have to read the question a couple of times to make sure you're paying attention to the detail of the question. Sometimes people hurry through things, and when you're stressed, you're not going to read things as thoroughly. So you want to make sure you do that. Okay, so we want least stable. So let's classify these. Classify. Classify means what we're doing here. Okay, some people miss that on the open response. This carbon with the carbocation is bonded to two carbons, so that's secondary. This carbon bonded to three carbons means that's tertiary. This carbon with the carbocation is bonded to a carbon-carbon double bond, that means it's allylic and it's a primary because the carbon is bonded to one carbon. This is benzylic and you could say that that's a secondary benzylic. Okay, so we know benzylic is pretty stable 
and lilac is pretty stable and we have tertiary that's pretty stable so clearly the secondary one would be your least stable and so hopefully you chose that okay so our next question um, question number 11 which compound will readily undergo both SN2 and SN1 reaction. Okay, so allylic and benzylic are both the fastest when it comes to SN1 and SN2. Okay, and then for SN2, then you want the methyl, and you want the primary, and then you'd want the secondary. Okay, so this is the most reactive, and then this is the least. Okay, so now for... Um, and SN1, both of these are both here, and then it would be a tertiary. So tertiary. And then it would be a secondary. Okay, so it's secondary and tertiary. Primaries are not going to. So now we look at the questions, and we see that we have this one here, and that's a benzyl. So the benzyl will be um, the most readily undergo both SN1 and SN2. Um, the other options you had were this compound here. This is not an allylic. So this is where you got to pay attention to detail, folks. This is a halogen on an sp2 carbon. You're not going to get uh, substitution reactions on an sp2 carbon. You see that this is on an sp3 carbon. That's where hy hybridization is good, and you should always be paying attention to that. This one here, this is just a plain old primary. Okay, so that's going to go the fastest in an SN2. It is not even going to go in an SN1. This vinyl here is neither. It's not going to go SN1 or SN2. And then what was the other option? This one here. And this is a secondary. And secondary is going to go slow in both. So your answer is the benzyl halide. All right, so then our next question, if that was 12, let's see, that was 11. Okay, so here's 12. Okay, so question 12. Which is the starting material, we'll just say SM, for this reaction? So we're getting into reactions now, and you're always going to have to predict starting material or reagents, and so you need to start doing your reaction sheets. I'm going to give you an example of how to fill out your reaction sheets after we go through these. And if you have your reaction sheets with you, that will be really helpful. Um, okay, so the starting material, you got to figure out what kind of reaction this is. And this is free radical halogenation. So that means what's your starting material. So this is where we're going to just go ahead and do add this to your reaction sheet. So your reaction sheet is in your, um, it's in one of your um, learning modules. And um, what you want to do is it'll have starting material. And you can just make this yourself. You can just on a blank piece of paper. And then you could have reaction conditions. And then you could have the product. And then it can have, like, is there stereochemistry involved? Um, is there um, 
So is there any, is there any stereochemistry or regiochemistry? So this is kind of just like your notes that are specific. So I would do one reaction sheet per one, and you can even do this on just a blank piece of paper. So starting, so this is, I would title this, and you can give it a title, free, free radical halogenation. And the starting material is an alkane. And so you can write the word alkane, and then you can give an example. So for this reaction, this is your starting material. So you see how you have six carbons in the ring and then a carbon there. So you have to start with your carbons. Reaction conditions, these are kind of like your reagents. So you got to have a halogen and you either have H nu or heat. And then you're going to end up having initiation. We have free radical. So here you might want, and this is kind of like your mechanism question. So you want free radical intermediate. So for this one, your free radical intermediate would look like this. Okay, so it would abstract the tertiary carbon hydrogen because it would be the lowest bond dissociation energy. And then your product here with chlorine would be chlorination. And I would go so far as to actually put my mechanism down below. So you have this on my sheets, I leave um, some space there so you could show, okay, this is my initiation where I have my fish hook arrows and I get two free radicals and then I have a propagation step one and my propagation step one, I take my starting material, my alkane, here's my hydrogen. Now I have that free radical, and then this is going to abstract. Notice I have three fish hook arrows in my propagation step, and I'm gonna generate the free radical plus HCl. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a second propagation step So I'm going to have a P2 where I take this free radical and I'm going to generate another free radical because that's propagation and I'm also going to generate my product here. So this is our organic product and we generate it free radical. And then you can do bond dissociation energies and that way you always have an example because like I said when you come to organic 2 you will have to go through and you will get a, a question like this which is the starting material for a reaction like this. And the answer here is this one right here. Okay so it's just your methyl cyclohexane. Um, the problem with the other choices, we can go through the other choices. You have this here, just cyclohexane. Count your carbons, folks. You got seven carbons. You're only adding a chlorine, so that's not going to work. We are not doing anything with a double bond. We are using our starting material is alkanes only. So that is not um, your starting material and something like this is not your starting material because that's an alkyl halide and not an alkane. So the starting material for this reaction is an alkane. All right, now we're on to question 17. And this is, which is the major product, because what we care about is the organic product, in the reaction below. Okay, and this is where you need to have another reaction sheet. So we'll fill out a reaction sheet for this one as well. Sodium, azi, and DMF. And then what's your product? Okay, so this is an SN2 reaction. So in your reaction sheet, you should have 
So I have starting material, reaction conditions, um, product, and then we'll just say notes, okay? So this is an SN2 reaction. How do we know that? Well, we have an alkyl halide starting material. And you can put your alkyl halide in there. And reaction conditions are you want polar aprotic solvent. So DMF is one of those examples. You can put other examples on your sheet. Remember, these are for you. And then you have a great, or you could say a strong nucleophile. Sodium azid. This is a secondary alkyl halide. And you could put your pattern here for starting material where you have benzylic, allylic, and then methyl and primary. Your product then is going to be um, whatever your nucleophile adds, right? And that's what's asking here. So you've got to look at just the iodide here that's going to be your leaving group, and you're going to replace it with your nucleophile, your strong nucleophile. And so I'm going to put this as a dash going away from me. Okay. And so the product is um, the nucleophile replaces your leaving group. And then notes, you get inversion of stereochemistry. And you, you're writing these notes for you. So if you have something on the wedge, it becomes... The nucleophile becomes the uh, dash and vice versa, okay? So you see we have um, this right here is a wedge, and now the nucleophile is on the dash. Now looking at your options um, for your multiple choice, you should be doing this before you ever look at your options. I see um, a problem like this, okay, well guess what folks, sodium did not add, okay, so we're going to X out that one. We also have this one here, what's wrong with that? Well it's a 1, 2, 3, so it's a 1, 3. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, so these are constitutional isomers they're not the same it's not the product okay so we can exit out that one and then you've got two that are in the chair format well then that means I need to change this into the chair so if I do this in the chair on the fourth one here um, so if I want to put this equatorial we'll make this our fourth okay so there's isopropyl I'll make that four, three, two, here's my one. Let's see if I can get this going down. And three, and then up is hydrogen. Um, so N3 is going down. They're on the same side, so this is down and this is down. So I have this equatorial down, I have this axial down, they're both down, and so I'm going to look for something. Um, these are my options. I have a chair that looks like this, N3, this is down and this is up, so that's trans. This is cis, I'm looking for cis, and then I have a problem that looks like this, where N3 is down. Azide's down and isopropyl's down. They're both down. That's my cis. This is my answer. Okay? So you need to work through the problems and then go through and see which ones um, apply. Okay, let's do question 18. Question 18 asks for relationships. So it wants the relationship between the following pairs of structures. And these are the bicyclos. Now, 
So let's look at this first structure here. What if we were to make a mirror image? Because hopefully you can see that these compounds here have the same number of carbons. So let's make our mirror image here. Would you agree that that's the mirror image? Okay, now let's rotate this 180 degrees. So when you rotate this, what is in back becomes front. So my chlorine is going to become front because it's in back. And then what is on the right or left is going to go to the right. So my double bond is going to go to the right. All right, so when I rotate this, notice my what's on top stays on top. So this carbon here is still on top, but now I have my double bond on the right. Here it's on the left. And what's in back, the chlorine, is now in front. So this is the back, and now this is the front. If you don't believe me, take your hands and do your mirror images with your thumbs and rotate your right hand, and then your thumb will be away from you. Now you want to compare the original image with this image. Are these superimposable? Okay, they're not, are they? And the reason why they're not is because this chlorine, think about that as that was your thumb, is on the opposite side of this other chlorine. So, but are they mirror images of each other? Are these mirror images? Yes, so this means they're mirror images that are not superimposable. They are in antiomers. Okay. So that's question 18. Let's go to question 19. 19 is also uh, predicting a relationship. And we have Fisher projections. Okay, so do these have the same molecular formula? Okay, so we have CHO, which is an aldehyde, folks. And we have OH, and we have an OH, and we have a CH2OH. So one, two, three, four, C4. Um, how many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four oxygens. Do we have the same thing here? One, two, three, four carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. And we have one, two, three, four oxygens. So we have the same molecular formula. What about the connectivity? Is the order the same? They both have an aldehyde and then an alcohol, an alcohol, and alcohol. Okay, so the connectivity is the same. Now, are they the same? Well, we have two stereo centers. So we have a stereo center here. So this would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's do the stereo center for two. Okay, so we have an oxygen, which is going to get number one. And then we have, and what I would do if I was working this out, I go ahead and just make that my aldehyde. So I can see that that carbon is bonded to two oxygens because we're comparing carbon and a carbon. And this carbon is bonded to one oxygen. This one's bonded to two oxygen. So that would be number two. And then this chain would be number three. And then your hydrogen is number four. And then if I was to connect my one, two, three, I'm going which way? I'm turning the steering wheel to the left counterclockwise. That's S. But since a hydrogen is on the wedge here, S has to become R. So this one is 2R. And then I'm going to go to my next one, my next stereo center, which is right here. And I have an oxygen, a carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So oxygen is going to be my number one. Let me go ahead and erase some of these numbers around here. Okay. So my oxygen is going to be. 
number one. And then I have a carbon and a carbon. This is a carbon oxygen, this is carbon oxygen, and then this can go to a carbon carbon. So this is going to be number two, and the bottom is going to be number three, and this hydrogen is going to be number four. So when I connect my one, two, three, once again, I'm going S, but the hydrogen's coming at me, so S has to go to R, the switcheroo, and that's 3R. So this compound is called 2R, 3R. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to assign the same priorities here. So here we have, make that out there, it's easier for us to see. Okay, we're looking at this carbon here. We have oxygen, that's going to be number one. Now we have a carbon and a carbon. This carbon is connected to two oxygens. This one's one oxygen. So this is going to be number two. And then this is going to be number three. And then number four is the hydrogen. So we're going to connect one, two, and three. And you see that's R we're going right. But the hydrogen is coming at you because of the bow tie. So R becomes S. So this is 2S. Let's go to the next one. Our next stereo center, we're looking at oxygen, carbon, or carbon. Oxygen gets number one. Now we're looking at carbon and a carbon. And now this carbon here is bonded to an oxygen. That carbon's bonded to an oxygen. But then the next highest is this carbon's bonded to another carbon. So this is number two. And then this would be number three. And our hydrogen would be number four. And so if we connect our one, two, three, one, two, three, we have S, but because the hydrogen's on the wedge, the bow tie, we got to go to R. So this is 2S, 3R. Okay, so we're comparing 2R, 3R, and 2S, 3R. And so do we see that the, what it would be the enantiomer of this one? 2s, 3s. And what would be the enantiomer of this one? 2r, 3s. So is this 2r, 3s? No. Is this 2s, 3s? No. So these are going to have to be diastereomers because only one has changed, and that is the 2. And if it's going to be an antimer, they both have to change. So that is... Um, Question number the diocese. That was number 19. Okay, question number 22. We have three more questions to go over. Okay, which of the following compounds rotate plane polarized? light. Okay, so that's the same thing as saying something is chiral versus achiral. An achiral compound does not rotate light. Plain polarized light. Chiral does rotate uh, light. Okay, so if it's chiral, it will rotate plain polarized light. There's some nice examples in your um, textbook on this, and you do have access to your textbooks while you're taking these. So if you've done your reading, you would see the examples here um, that if you have a compound here in the, and you have um, halogens on the same side, this is a plane of symmetry. And the way the book does that is it shows um, a sigma there, a sigma. And it shows a plane of symmetry, and so therefore, if it has a plane of symmetry, it has to be achiral. Um, however, you have a compound like this with chlorine up and chlorine down that does not. No plane of symmetry. And um, do you have carbons, asymmetric carbons here? Okay, well, this carbon here has a hydrogen. So it has to have four different things. It has a chlorine. So it has a hydrogen and a chlorine. And then if you go out, you'll see that this is a CH2. CH2. And this is a CHCl. So yes, that would be asymmetric carbon. 
and you could look and see uh, the next carbon over here is an asymmetric carbon because it has a chlorine and a hydrogen and it has a CHCl and a CH2. So that carb compound would be um, the answer because it would rotate plane polarized light. The other two that you have here is um, this compound here and you have no asymmetric carbons here. So you do have a plane of symmetry. The CH2s are not asymmetric. This is a carbon double bonded oxygen. That's not asymmetric. You have to have an asymmetric carbon um, most times in order to have a, a chiral compound. And so here we have bromine and we have hydrogen, but then you go out and this CH2 and this is CH2. And you go out here CH2 and this is CH2 and then you, you meet, you see, you meet. So that's a carbonyl, and when you come back out, you see that that meets is a carbonyl. So that does not have an asymmetric carbon. It has a point of symmetry. The other um, compound here is this Fischer projection. And when I see these Fischer projections, I always look at the top and the bottom to look for a plane of symmetry because that will save me a lot of time. So I see that CH2Br at the top and the bottom are the same. And so then I say, oh, okay, there's my plane of symmetry. And so that means this must be a chiral. Then Okay, question 23. So we have two more questions to go. Okay, configuration. Which of the following are S configurations? And your correct answer is this one here. So what you want to do is you want to con um, maybe X out the ones that don't, that are obviously um, achiral. So an achiral compound would have symmetry and so we can look at these. I will just put them all here and we will just go through them because you got to be able to sign R and S and okay so I'll just go here right here you see that this is chlorine this carbon has a chlorine what you don't see here is a hydrogen but once again if you go compare the fourth one you've got CH2 CH2 and then you got CH2 CH2 and then they meet um, right here okay so since they meet since they meet this would be a chiral because that would mean there's a plane of symmetry there so that can't have S configuration okay here let's look at this one you have um, chlorine and a hydrogen but then once again, you got CH2, 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 and then you can see where they both meet on the CH2. And since they meet there, then that means that there is no chiral carbon there. So you're down to these two. Okay, so chlorine, you got to assign your priorities. Chlorine would be the highest atomic number. So you got chlorine. What's not shown is a hydrogen and back. That's going to be your lowest priority for. Now you have a CH2 or a CH. And I always go with a CH over a CH2 because that means this carbon is bonded to a hydrogen and a carbon and a carbon. If you do your tree, this carbon is bonded to another carbon and two hydrogens. So um, this would be number three or two. Number two, and this would be number three. And so if you connect your number one, and your number two, and then your number three, you connect those, that is turning counterclockwise or going left, so that's S. And does S stay S? Yes, S will stay S because number four is in back. So this is your, um, this is your S configuration. You can also check this one here. This is your number one which you're not seeing is hydrogen and back, so that's number four. And then 
this would be number two, and this one here would be number three. So when you connect your one, two, three, one, two, three, you see that that is R. Okay, so let's do our last one, which is question number 25. Number 25 is a Fisher projection. And it gives you a perspective drawing. So this is called a perspective drawing. And we must convert that into a Fisher projection. Okay, so you want the CHO at the top. This is a CHO. And then how many stereo centers you have? You have one here. And so something's going to get the H and the OH. And we don't know about that yet. We're going to have to check. We're going to have to sign R and S. Okay, so we're going to have to sign configuration. Um, the next one here has uh, a CH3 and a hydrogen. We still don't know about that one. And then at the bottom here is CH, CH3. And so I look at all of these, and they're all like that. They have a CH3 and a CHO. Um, so that looks good. So now we have to sign R and S and find out if the which side um, we're going to put this OH on. So let's assign this here. We have to sign the first one here. So what would this be? Oxygen would be number one. Okay. And then we have a carbon and a carbon. What's coming at you or going away is what? Hydrogen. So we want to put that in there because it helps us problem solve. We know that's number four. Now we have these two carbons, and this carbon is bonded to a bunch of carbons, and this carbon is bonded to oxygen. So this is going to be number two, and then this is going to be number three. And so if we connect our one, two, three, we see that we have an R, and an R stays R because the hydrogen is back. So this is R, and we can call that one, two. So we have a two R, and then what do we have for three? Okay, so let's assign priorities on this carbon here. Uh, this carbon has a hydrogen coming at you. This is a CH3 here. So we have um, hydrogen coming at you is number four. We have a CH3 here. We have a CH, or we, no, we don't have a CH. That's just a C. Okay, so we have this carbon and this carbon that we're deciding which one gets number one. Um, this has a CO. This does not have a CO, so this is going to be number one. This is going to be number two, and this is number three. So let's connect our one, two, three. One, two, three is what? That's going counterclockwise. That's going S. But the hydrogen's coming at you, so S has to switch to an R. So we have a 2R and a 3R. That is our compound. So then we want to come down here and we want to sign, we want to draw out our Fisher projection. I haven't even looked at see what our um, options are. Um, so let's just go ahead and draw it like it's an open response. Um, this carbon, this oxygen gets number one. So there's our number one. This is our number four. And then we have a carbon and we can go ahead and draw this out to make it easier for us um, to see that that would be number two because that carbon is bonded to oxygen. This carbon is not, so this would be number three. So now we have one, two, three. Let's connect our one, two, three. That is what? That's R, but the hydrogen's on the wedge, so that would be S. So I'm going to redraw this. And now we know that we want OH over here and we want hydrogen over there because 
if we look at this compound, we've assigned that as S, and we know that we need it to be R. So this is going to be one of them, and then we're going to check this one here. All right, so now we have the hydrogen's number four, and then we have this CH3. We have a C bonded to two carbons, and we have this carbon here bonded to an oxygen, so that's going to be number one. And this is going to be number two, and this is going to be number three. So we go one, two, three. All right, one, two, three. So that's R, but the hydrogen's coming at you. So that becomes S. So that's not right. So now we have to put CH3 here and a hydrogen there. And then this corresponds to 2R, 3R. And then we look for the correct answer here, and we see the one that looks like this. Okay, uh, one of the problems has the CH3 on the wrong side, the other one has the OH on the wrong side, and then one of them has um, a constitutional isomer. Um, because on they have, instead of... Uh, the OH being on the carbon number two, it's on the carbon number three, and the CH3 is on the carbon number two. Okay, so that actually goes through your exam two problems for multiple choice. You have been given your open response questions, feedback um, individually, and um, the other thing we just, are, now we're focusing on alkenes, elimination reactions so make sure that you do elimination reactions for your um, quiz today and then we're also going to talk about electrophilic addition reactions which you're going to see on your last quiz six um, next week and then your final exam in here it's not a cumulative so to speak um, it's going to cover um, chapters seven eight and nine which are your electrophilic addition reactions and hopefully you're organizing your notes so that you have each reaction on a reaction sheet like we've talked about. Okay, if you have any other questions, please send them to me and I'll try to do another Q&A this week.